The next item of business is a statement by Angela Constance on Scotland's prison population. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement, and so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on the Cabinet Secretary. Up to 10 minutes. Thank you. Presiding officer, over the course of this year, the prison population has risen from around 600 from 7,303 to yesterday 7,937. This is an increase of around 9%. This represents a significant challenge and further increases will seriously impact on those that work in our prisons and on the prison population itself. Scotland is not unique in this challenge. There are increases in England and Wales of similar proportions. As I made clear in my letter to the Criminal Justice Committee two weeks ago, this acute pressure is a great cause of concern and is one that I am taking action on. And as I also made clear, the Scottish Government is not changing its position on the use of prisons. They are necessary in society to punish, to protect and to rehabilitate and reduce re-offending. Therefore, our independent courts must continue to have the ability to remove an individual's liberty when appropriate. Protecting victims and the public from harm is my absolute priority. Whether custody or a community-based alternative is used, ultimately the goal is the same. Less crime, fewer victims and safer communities. Crime has reduced and the number of people entering prison each year has fallen substantially. So why does the prison population level not match these changes? We must consider the reasons behind this and also what the evidence shows us in effectiveness of prison and alternative sentencing. We know that community sentences lead to safer communities as they are more effective at reducing reoffending than short-term custodial sentences, which is why we have protected investment in community-based interventions and are providing a total of £134 million to support community justice services this year. Yet whilst the number of individuals on community sentences has increased, so has the number of people in prison. Yesterday we had 312 people serving sentences of six months or less. Recognising the independence of our courts, we must consider the reasons for this and work on increasing confidence in alternative sentencing, particularly in community justice. Since January of this year, there has been a 19% rise in sentences of under four years. This is one of the reasons for the rising prison population. Another is remand. Though the post-pandemic court recovery programme is doing its job in clearing the backlog, there has been an unanticipated increase in the remand population, which has now reached a historic high, particularly with women. Another reason for the increase in prison population is the substantial change in the individuals who are in prison. In the last decade, prisons have become increasingly populated by individuals convicted of violent and sexual offences and those serving longer sentences. The average length of prison sentences has increased by 14% over that period. This, of course, also shows the success of other areas of our justice system in improvements in the clear-up rates and increased reporting and investigation of crimes such as sexual offending. The age profile of the prison population has also changed. The longer term reduction in individuals spending time in custody each year has been driven almost entirely by a reduction in young people and those aged under 30. But the prison population is mirroring our own society in terms of demographics. Over the last 10 years, the average daily population of male prisoners aged over 50 has nearly doubled from 647 to 1201. This brings its own challenges to the Scottish Prison Service as SPS see the welcome reduction in young people. They are also seeing an increase in the need to contract for social care for an ageing prison population. There is an issue uh, that I have spoken to SPS officers about on my many visits to the majority of Scotland's prisons uh, in the six months uh, since I became Justice Cabinet Secretary. Presiding officer, these are the reasons of a changing and increasing prison population and I want to address the actions we have already taken and further action that we will need to take. 
We took action when it became clear that the GOAME contract was not working as it should be and was causing disruption for court efficiency uh, and for the Scottish Prison Service. Uh, and we did this by providing SPS with additional flexibility to work with GOAME to support improved staff recruitment and retention to improve the issue. And I am grateful to Justice Partners for working with SPS to find solutions and for implementing practical changes that reduce the demands on GOAME. Presiding officer, to decrease the use of custody in appropriate cases in favour of more effective community-based alternatives, we have extended the presumption against short sentences from three to 12 months. And this supports people to have a stable life, including staying in employment. To address the remand population, we have introduced electronic monitoring on bail and have invested £3.2 million this year to support bail assessment and bail supervision services as a direct alternative to remand. This has now supported the establishment of bail supervision services in 30 local authorities, with the final two to be established by the end of the year. Presiding officer, since we introduced electronically monitored bail in May 2022, over 1,200 electronic monitoring bail orders have been granted and around 375 individuals are currently being monitored. The 25% increase in the use of electronic monitoring since last year is driven by bail and other court orders. Future development of the service will include exploring the use of GPS technology which could change how people are monitored and support decision-making with individuals, for example, on home detention curfew. The Bail and Release from Custody Act seeks to refocus remand so it is reserved for those who pose a risk of public safety or the delivery of justice. It enables courts when passing sentence to take into account the time an accused spends on electronically monitored bail in a comparable way as they can do with time spent on remand. We are aiming to commence those provisions by the end of this year as a further tool for the independent judiciary to have when sentencing. In addition, investment in community justice is a key strand to a longer term solution to this issue. We need to improve confidence in appropriate alternatives to imprisonment because we know they are effective and support people from re-offending. And we are therefore urgently planning increased support for people on alternatives to remand with a particular focus on mentoring and one-to-one -one support. Presiding officer, we are also supporting the Scottish Prison Service and the actions that they are taking to respond to the increase in the number of people in their care which include considering what can be done within the existing prison estate to safely accommodate additional prisoners and making further improvements to progression to the open estate eh, and our two new community custody units eh, to help prisoners better prepare for their eventual release eh, and return to our community. We also remain committed to modernising and improving the prison estate to ensure that it is fit for purpose and supports the rehabilitation of offenders. And we have provided an extra 29 million this year to support SPS to deliver a stable and secure prison system on top of the 97 million pounds in capital funding to continue the modernization of the prison estate to better meet the needs of staff and prisoners. While we are taking action to deal with the immediate issue in front of us, I am determined to also develop longer lasting solutions that are robust and continue to put public safety and victims first. We have therefore established the Prison Population Leadership Group comprising of senior representatives from the justice sector and beyond to identify both long and short term options to address the challenges and ensure a collective response. I want a justice system that will take a whole systems approach using multi-agency partnership and have a clear focus on early and effective intervention, diversion and rehabilitative support. Prisons contain some of society's most vulnerable individuals. Around a quarter of the prison population have been in care and just half are from our most deprived communities. To bring about a reduction in the prison population, as a society, we must work together to address the underlying causes for much of that offending, and this includes tackling poverty and inequality and substance misuse, as well as wider work to grow the economy and improve educational standards and reduce health inequalities. And we must always 
always ensure that we put victims at the heart of our decision making. Presiding officer, let me finish by paying tribute to all those who work in our prisons, SPS staff, NHS staff, social workers, educators, chaplains and many others. And I have seen firsthand the extraordinary work they do. I know that those working in our, in our prisons, particularly SPS staff, are working diligently to respond to the pressures caused by the rising prison population. And I very much want to hear from this chamber on their views today and also uh, from justice spokespeople who I will meet tomorrow. I believe that this situation requires cross-public sector and cross-party collaboration to address the situation. And Scotland has demonstrated in the past the ability to achieve significant justice reforms and we now need to rise to the challenge of a rising prison population to deliver on our ambitions for a just, safe and resilient Scotland. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in her statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we'll move on to the next item of business. And I'd be grateful if members who wish to put a question were to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call Russell Finlay. Yeah, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of today's statement. And I, however, find it astonishing that it contains not a single mention of the impact of drugs on the prison population. Prison officers deal with violent and volatile prisoners who are under the influence of highly dangerous psychoactive substances, yet the SNP government dithered while jails were flooded with drug-soaked mail causing mass overdoses, some fatal. The BBC has today reported that drones are increasingly being used to smuggle contraband, including weapons. Staff are being terrorised by organised crime gangs with at least 10 firebombings of vehicles. A senior Prison Officer Association official, who is also an SNP councillor, says that threats and intimidation are at the worst he has seen in 30 years. This is all relevant to the prison population. The SNP have allowed drugs to spiral out of control. Those who leave prison in the grip of addiction will almost certainly find their way back inside now, we know the SNP cannot seek to undermine judicial independence by freeing dangerous criminals who are behind bars for good reason. So, if they are really intent on reducing prisoner numbers, do they accept that tackling this drugs epidemic is of critical importance? Thank you. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Presiding officer, Mr Finlay is of course um, correct to raise the, the impact of drugs and the uh, harsh reality of a rise in prison population is that it makes many issues that the prison service uh, uh, heroically uh, try and tackle. It makes their job day in, day out uh, all the more harder. But of course, what we know uh, around drugs in prisons is that the, the scale of the challenge often reflects what is in the community. And when the prison uh, service close down one route, uh, they need to be very swift and alert because invariably another route uh, opens up. So this is uh, an ongoing challenge. They work very closely uh, with Police Scotland. Now, I'm not going to uh, go into an awful lot of detail in and around uh, you know, the, the, the more covert um, intelligence or security uh, measures, but I am happy to have a further discussion uh, with Mr Finlay about that. But also to, to emphasise that the Scottish Prison Service and this government take the welfare and the safety of prison officers and staff with the utmost seriousness, because we know that as a result of the criminal justice system doing what it should be doing, that there are more people from a serious organised crime background. And that again, you know, there are measures that the Scottish Prison Service takes day in, day out to ensure the welfare and safety of their staff. It is important to remember that over and above disrupting the supply of drugs into our prisons that we need to be focused on treatment and we need to be focused on recovery. And I was very uh, pleased to see uh, that very recently that His Majesty's Inspectorate for Prisons in her annual report paid tribute to the recovery work that is now ongoing in our prisons. Katie Clark. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for the update on the increasing prison population. And I note what she says regarding the extension of the presumption against short sentences and indeed the ageing prison population. Does she believe that the prison population will continue to, to rise due to court backlogs and the increasing number of convictions for sexual offences? 
Will she share with us the projections she has for future prison numbers? And will she confirm that there will be no further delay to the modernisation of the prison estate, including at HMP Glasgow, Highlands and the commencement of work at Greenock? Cabinet Secretary. President Officer, um, Ms Clark uh, is again quite correct to uh, point to the issues in and around uh, short sentences and uh, the ageing population within our prison estate. In terms of the projections, there were projections that were published uh, over the summer months. There will be further uh, projections published um, in November. Uh, I felt it was of uh, imperative, given the, the seriousness of this issue, that does require serious scrutiny uh, and a serious sober debate about the future and the way forward to share as much information uh, with committee and parliament as possible. Um, yes, um, the success that we've had with the court backlog is indeed um, you know, adding to the, the prison population. Uh, but what was not anticipated is it was anticipated that the remand population would fall as the sentence population increased, and that um, has not happened. And yes, we are utterly uh, committed to the replacement of HMP Barlini with the new HMP Glasgow. Uh, and indeed, over the summer, I visited HMP Inverness uh, to discuss their plans uh, in and around um, HMP Highland. And uh, for brevity, uh, the member and I have corresponded a lot around HMP Greenock, which I also had the pleasure of visiting over the summer. And I have no doubt that we will continue to do that. Thank you. And I call Audrey Nicholl to be followed by Sharon Dowie. Thank you, Presiding Officer. What more can the Scottish Government do to harness technology to increase the use of electronic monitoring, particularly as an alternative to remand and short jail sentences? Cabinet Secretary. Presiding Officer, um, electronic monitoring is a, a tried and tested feature of Scotland's justice system and a key tool to support moving on from prison or as an alternative to a custodial sentence. It supports reintegration and also allows for swift responses from Police Scotland and other justice partners where any conditions are breached. Um, the member will know that we introduced electronic monitoring of bail last May and that this option has become uh, more widely used. We are, of course, exploring GPS with partners and we are, are looking at whether this may offer options around other forms uh, of release that are currently um, available. Um, however, some of this work in and around electronic monitoring because it requires um, um, the, the development of uh, further technology or indeed um, the uh, support mechanisms underpinning it um, is not necessarily a short term measure, but it's certainly one for the short to medium term. Sharon Dowie to be followed by Ivan McKee. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The recent rise in Scotland's prison population is due to more criminals being sentenced for more serious crimes. This is despite the SNP government and others doing their best to empty Scotland's prisons through the presumption against short prison sentences, the under-25 sentencing guidelines and diverting criminals from prosecution. Does this not confirm that the SNP's policies have removed the deterrent to commit crime and allowed serious offending to spiral out of control? Cabinet Secretary. Oh, President Officer, dear, dear me, um, the, the, the member is half right uh, when she says that there are more serious offenders uh, spending longer in prison, and that indeed uh, indicates the effectiveness um, of our justice system. Um, but there is nothing soft about having one of the highest prison populations in Europe, and nor is that smart justice. And as I have uh, indicated in great detail, both in my letter uh, to the Justice Committee, and I hope the members had an opportunity to read that, and in my statement today, is that we are not just seeing a rise in the long-term uh, serious organised crime or sexual offending prisoners. We are seeing an increase in remand, which is a historic high. That, of, of course, is untried prisoners. Uh, and as I intimated in my statement, we have over 300 people uh, as of today in our system uh, sending, spending less than six months in prison. And in some cases that might be entirely uh, appropriate. Our judiciary are of, are of course independent, but we must rise to the challenge of providing more, and I'm determined to do this, doing more uh, to ensuring that we have more effective, uh, more visible, 
uh, community disposals that make our communities safer and increasing the confidence uh, in and around that work. I call Ivan McKee to be followed by Claire Baker. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary will be aware that Berlini Prison, Scotland's largest, lies in my Glasgow Province constituency. In my conversations with those who engage regularly with the prison population express concern that, in their words, many prisoners probably should not be there and that treatment for addiction, health or other root causes would be a more effective use of the significant public funds currently spent on incarceration. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what reoffending rate data she has and whether the data shows that more successful outcomes in terms of lower reoffending rates are achieved by non-custodial as opposed to custodial sentences? Cabinet Secretary. Poseidon officer, um, I will always stress that prison is necessary for those who pose a risk of serious harm. Um, however, it is important to recognise that the reconviction rate for individuals who are given a community payback order is consistently lower than those given short sentences, with the, the latest statistics showing a reconviction rate of 25 per cent for those on a community payback order. Uh, but uh, this nearly doubles for those given a custodial sentence of one year or less to uh, 47%. So it is clear that people in custody uh, often present with higher levels of risk and vulnerability than the general population as a whole, uh, often given very complex health needs, including uh, mental health issues, a history of being uh, looked after. Uh, and we are working with our key partners to improve uh, the health and well-being uh, of those in our care in prisons. Uh, and I am determined uh, that we will indeed have safe, effective and person-centred uh, care. And of course, there is a, a national mission uh, on drugs uh, to improve the lives of those impacted by drugs. Uh, and that is for those in the community, but also for those who are imprisoned. Thank you. I call Claire Baker to be followed by Fulton McGregor. Um, thank you, President Officer. Um, when we are seeing a welcome investment into the estate in Stirling and also the opening of Bella Centre in Dundee and other centres, we are seeing a worrying increase in the number of women who have been held on remand. Uh, could the Cabinet Secretary be expand on what she thinks the reasons for this are and how we are going to address it? Cabinet Secretary. Poseidon Officer, the, the reasons for women being held on remand are complex. Uh, part of the bail and release bill that was uh, passed before recess uh, will gather more data in and around this. But um, if I look at the statistics this week on the prison population, 28-29% um, of the male population are on remand whereas women, it is this week 34%, some weeks that is as high as 37%. Uh, and we have achieved much in terms of improving the women's estate um, and also in terms of you know, moving forward with those trauma-informed approaches. Uh, I am determined that we will do more for all groups of, of prisoners, particularly women, in terms of community um, al al alternatives. Uh, but the reasons are uh, complex. They're ultimately matters uh, for, 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 for the court. Uh, but we are committed to uh, robust alternatives, uh, both to manage those uh, higher levels of risk and vulnerability, uh, but also to furnish more uh, data-driven uh, evidence on this. I call Fulton McGregor to be followed by Liam MacArthur. Thank you, President Officer. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if she has considered any measures introduced in England would be appropriate options for Scotland. For example, I understand that since March, sentencing guidance on the relevance of prison overcrowding should be taken into account for shorter sentences. And can I also ask her what impact she believes the strategy for community justice is having in reducing the prison population and reoffending? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, President officer, what, what we know is that the strategy for community justice and the underpinning delivery plan um, is having an impact. We are seeing more people um, taking part in uh, community justice uh, disposals, uh, but we are also seeing more people um, in, in, in imprisoned in terms of our, our daily prison uh, po population. Um, in terms of other measures um, elsewhere in the UK, it is important to stress to Chamber that there is a, a Four Nations UK-wide dialogue on this. You know, we do want to uh, share information uh, about our shared challenges and uh, look at the, the different solutions that different jurisdictions, whether that's in the UK or indeed uh, elsewhere in Europe, that are being deployed. Um, I can 
confirm that uh, we uh, have no plans to use uh, police cells, for example, as additional capacity uh, for prisons. Um, and before taking any such step, I would have to very carefully consider uh, the, the practical and feasible um, impact um, of that. And part of the, the purpose of bringing together the Prison Population Leadership Group is to really focus, because we have been here before as a government and a parliament and a country with very significant rises in our prison population. We need to not consider any measure in isolation, but we really need to uh, expand on that whole systems approach and get the right solutions uh, for now, but also uh, for the future. I call Liam MacArthur to be followed by Ruth McGuire. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary is right that uh, the shockingly high numbers in Scotland's prisons, um, the reasons for that are complex, but they're not new, and the inspectorate has been, I think, warning of the implications for some decades now. Uh, recent data suggested that in the adult male uh, prison estate, every prison is at or over capacity, with the exception of Castle Huntley, SPS's low security open estate prison, which is operating at half capacity. The prison expected it has highlighted the institution as inspiring and a flagship establishment, but one that is um, severely underutilised. So what can the Cabinet Secretary do, uh, do to ensure that that um, institution is better utilised to improve rehabilitation and ease some of the strain across the prison estate? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Presiding officer, um, Mr MacArthur is quite correct to point to the recent uh, report and indeed previous reports uh, by the, the prison in, in inspectorate um, because while she uh, praises the good work that has been done, she also sets a, a clarion call uh, around our collective response and that we need to have a strategy of tackling numbers uh, beyond capacity and also to use the successes that we have had in tackling um, the, the previously high numbers of women in custody and young people in custody to learn from that and to apply some of that learning uh, into the, the, the male estate. In terms of the overcapacity of prisons, uh, he's correct, uh, 10 out of those 17 establishments uh, are um, uh, facing that and that's a matter of public record that I think I put on public record in response to a question from Mr um, MacArthur. The issue here is we need to tackle remand, so we need to you know, address the historic high levels of remand, and that will, in course, help us address some of the issues in and around progression. Uh, there are other actions we will need to take to ensure better progression, because you are absolutely correct, uh, those world-leading excellent facilities, whether it's the community custodial units for women or indeed Castle Huntley, we need to be uh, maximising the use of those facilities. Thank you. I'm keen to get in all members who have pressed to put a question, so I'd be grateful if we could pick up the pace. And I call Ruth McGuire to be followed by Maggie Chapman. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Jail is absolutely the place where many offenders should be. However, when it comes to short prison sentences, we know that family relationships, housing and work are all affected and that this can increase the risk of re-offending. What has the Scottish Government done to encourage more community justice sentencing to help people sustain their family relationships and employment? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, President officer, we know that community-based interventions and sentences rather than short-term custodial sentences can help ensure that justice is served and be more effective in reducing reoffending and assisting uh, with rehabilitation, leading to fewer victims and safer communities, which of course is what we all want to, to see. Uh, that of, of course is why we extended the presumption against uh, short-term sentences. It uh, is also why we uh, continue to invest and have protected uh, the community justice uh, services budget. Uh, but I am determined to do more to bolster capacity in community justice and strengthen alternatives uh, to uh, remand and also look at other uh, potential actions in and around uh, wider use of structured defer sentences, you know, the investment and services that underpins that. Uh, and as I've said to other members, I'm actively exploring um, ways uh, to, to invest more and do more with regards to community justice. Thank you, Maggie Chapman, to be followed by John Mason. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her statement, which highlights just how important it is to ensure there's community justice strategy strategy works and does actually reduce the prison population and reoffending. 
Can she outline what more we can do to implement the actions in that strategy, specifically how we can ensure vulnerable, vulnerable people, such as those who are themselves victims and survivors, those with poor mental health or with addiction issues are not unnecessarily incarcerated and criminalised, but supported through community and or restorative justice options? Cabinet Secretary. Presiding officer, there are a range of community sentences and other interventions available to decision makers in our justice system, eh, whether that's as alternative to custody. Eh, I'm also open to further improvements which could encourage that more widespread use of community sentences and other interventions. The National Strategy for Community Justice, along with the delivery plan, it sets out a range of actions to improve uh, the delivery and effectiveness of community justice. And our current work includes um, ensuring the availability of bail supervision services uh, and increasing the, the knowledge and awareness of uh, other interventions such as restorative justice. And we also remain committed to developing restorative justice services that are safe, consistent on a, and of a, a high standard nationally, uh, whilst delivering a service that is uh, person-centred, uh, reflecting local needs and circumstances. John Mason, to be followed by Annie Wells. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary said in her statement that around a quarter of the prison population have been in care and just under half are from our most deprived communities, in other words, some very vulnerable individuals. Is this inevitable or does she think this can be changed? Cabinet Secretary. Um, I think it should be changed. I don't think we should ever uh, throw in the towel and think anything uh, is inevitable. This is about, uh, first and foremost, the, the safety of our communities. Uh, and if we have the, the, the courage to engage in that debate uh, to improve community safety, we have to improve uh, reintegration and re rehabilitation. I would point the member to the success that we have had uh, in drastically decreasing the numbers uh, of young people in, for example, um, HMP Polmont. And that is a good example of where we had the courage and the consistency to take a whole systems approach and it has achieved uh, better outcomes for young people and for communities. We now need to scale that up and do it with a much larger, more complex population. I call Annie Wells to be followed by Stephen Kerr. Thank you, presiding officer. If judges decide more criminals need to go to prison, then that's where they should be. Yet this SNP government has failed to build replacement prisons to facilitate this rise in violent and sexual offenders. Where Linney's replacement has reportedly quadrupled in cost and is likely to be a year late. So can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that Berlinny's replacement will be built on time and can she also confirm whether the proposed capacity of the prison could fit Berlin's current population? Cabinet Secretary. Presiding officer, um, let, let me just be crystal clear. You don't have to be an economist or a master builder uh, to know the, the impact and the severe constraints that the construction industry is under in terms of labour costs, uh, the supply of labour as a result of Brexit, or indeed that the price of concrete has went up by 87%, never mind uh, the, the, the cost of steel. Um, what I am on record uh, as, as saying, and I'm absolutely committed uh, to uh, a replacement for HMP Berlini uh, for that new HMP Glasgow, which will, of course, uh, be developed with the best of practice in mind, um, that once the design plans are finalised, we will have a much better uh, accurate estimate, both of costs and timescales. But it is a journey that we are determined to pursue. And Stephen Kerr. It was the Cabinet Secretary that mentioned the phrase throwing in the towel. So let's talk about community payback orders because it's typical of the SNP's soft touch approach to justice that ministers have a track record of discounting the hours, the backlogged hours of unpaid work. Uh, at the end of 2022, there were 700,000 hours of backlog unpaid work. So what is the backlog now and what will the Cabinet Secretary do about it? Officer, it is important to recognise the uh, dedication and the importance of the work of community justice service staff, uh, including justice social work uh, services. Uh, the work they do is uh, incredibly important in the same way uh, as the, the work of those uh, working within our prisons. It is also important to recognise that community payback orders have a 74% uh, completion rate. I have already said on... 
74% completion rate. Uh, I, have already, I have already said, uh, presiding officer to chamber, on, on a number of uh, occasions that the reconviction uh, rate uh, of community disposals uh, in comparison to short-term sentences is much lower. So let's dump the rhetoric on soft justice. Let's focus on substance and let's focus collectively, I hope, on smart justice. And I will, of course, write to the member. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. And Mr Kerr, you will appreciate that you should not be contributing from your seat. Thank you. That concludes the ministerial statement on Scotland's prison population.